This is the rock that gave me life, according to Isaiah chapter number 51. This is the rock of eternity, a stable, steadfast rock. That's where my life came from. It came from the one who went to the cross 2,000 years ago. The rock is the foundation stone of the truth, both Jewish and Christian. The truth of the Judaism that was passed on to Christianity. The truth of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the foundation stone of the truth. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 16 says, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Amen. I'm standing on the rock. So many songs in that hymnal have been written about the rock. And friend, tonight we love and we worship the rock of ages. John chapter number 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. This is God dwelling among men. He is literally pitching his tent, his tent tabernacle in the presence of man. God, you say, preacher? Yes, God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Don't ever let a heretic tell you that the Lord Jesus Christ is not God Almighty in flesh. He is every bit. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter number 1, verse 1, God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. This is the word that came from God. The final word, though he spoke through the prophets, now he has spoke, spoken through his Son. Hear ye him, that Bible says. He doesn't speak as the scribes and as the Pharisees. Never man spake like this man. Why? Because he's the living Word of God. John chapter number 1 verse 14. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glories of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. What does that mean, preacher? It means that God dwelt with us in the Lord Jesus Christ. God made himself known to us in the Lord Jesus Christ. The eternal almighty Father made himself known to us through his Son in a way that we could understand this eternal being. And the Lord Jesus Christ dwelt in our midst. Revelation 21 verse 3 says, I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. It may not be on the heart of man, but it has been on the heart of God from ages past to dwell with men. That day will be a grand day. What a great day that'll be when God pitches his tent in the midst of men. Men who will have ears to hear, eyes to see, a heart to receive the presence of Almighty God. John 8, 58 says, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. In the Greek text, that is ego I me. That's an emphatic statement. In other words, I am, I am, I am, that I am. John 18 verse 4 says, Jesus therefore knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? Then they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. And as soon as he had said this unto them, <coughs> I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Why did they do that, preacher? They were standing in the presence of deity unfolding before them. And no man can stand before that holiness. God must make it possible for you to stand before God. And the only way we can do that is through the rock of ages. He hides us in the cleft of the rock. John 17 verse 24. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am 
that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world this is this interaction of the Trinity Father Son and Holy Spirit it speaks of a place and a time and a height that is beyond human comprehension but the Father loves his Son for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life when God Almighty the second person of the Trinity became manifest as God the Son in human flesh and God incarnated himself as a man that is irreversible that is the sacrifice that Christ gave throughout eternity the Lord Jesus Christ the man of God the Son of God the God man will never cease to exist he will ever be a witness and testimony to God's faithfulness and his love for us Colossians 1:17, and he is before all things and by him all things consist he upholds them by the word of his power I breathe I live I exist tonight and believe me I thank him for that day after day after day I say Lord thank you that I exist I exist because the Father brought me into existence in this world and the Lord Jesus Christ is my Savior. Revelation 22 verse 13, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Everything that has been said from the first letter of the Greek alphabet Alpha to the last letter of the Greek alphabet Omega, all things that are said from that first and to that last mean nothing except as they relate to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the sum total of all wisdom and knowledge is bound up in him. Therefore, he's the beginning and he's the ending of everything human that we understand. This is why in Revelation he calls himself the Alpha and the Omega. Colossians 1.15 is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Adam was made, placed in a garden, and was made in the image of God. Adam lost that image. 2,000 years ago when the Lord Jesus Christ came, he restored that image that Adam lost. That image is a powerful thing. It says in Hebrews 1 verse 3, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. That word person is a powerful word. Hypostasis in the Greek, it literally means the essence of God. So it says that he was the express image of the essence of God. That's why he could say to the people, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you've seen me, you have seen God. The Bible says in Hebrews 1 verse 11, they shall perish, but thou remainest. They all shall wax old as doth a garment, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up. They shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. 1 John 1, John the Apostle, who wrote the Gospel of John, who loved the Lord Jesus, who laid his head on his bosom. And when the Lord Jesus Christ said, one of you is going to deny me, it wasn't John knew it wouldn't be him. He said, who is he, Lord? John loved him, and Christ loved John with a special love. The disciple whom Jesus loved, he said in the gospel. He loved them all, but there had to be a special love for John. John stood at the cross when all the other disciples fled at the crucifixion. John the apostle was left at that cross. And here's what John says in his the epistles. We call them 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. 1st John 1 verse 1. That which was from the beginning 
which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. Note carefully, note carefully. He gives us eternal life, but He is eternal life. You see this New Testament teaching? I am the resurrection and the life. I am the bread of life. I am the water of life. I am the door of the sheepfold. I am the water. I am, I am, I am. He has made into us all things. He does not give us what we need for life. He is our life. He does not give us what we need to be spiritual. He is the source of our spirituality. You see what I mean? Satan will point you to a good thing and make you think you can receive something good from God when all the time he's pointing you to something that is dead for the only source of life there is is the Lord Jesus Christ and he is our life he is eternal life and that life was manifested 2,000 years ago and he walked among us he lived a sinless perfect life and he was crucified and on the third day he arose from the dead and 40 days later he ascended to the right hand of the Father and the angels sang in antiphony as he arose as he approached walked in the, in the in the book of Psalms it's called the song of degrees as by degree after degree after degree he ascended higher and higher and higher into the presence of Almighty God and when he approached the Father here's the God man a man that was born on this earth but he's the Lord Jesus Christ when he approached the Father the Father looked at his son who is now a man and said sit at my right and <laughs> the Lord Jesus sat down at the right hand of the Father. Oh, bless that righteous name tonight. Revelation 1, verse 17. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, John, Behold, get a good look at this. I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. The rock of ages. Cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. The rock of ages, dear friend, can be your rock. What do I do, preacher? You don't do anything. It's what you do with Christ. It's what you believe about him. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life. There's no long rigmarole of a bunch of stuff that you have to go through and accomplish to approach God. The approach has already been made. The door is already open. God is satisfied. That big veil in the temple has been split from the top to the bottom. He hath made of twain one new man, Jew and Gentile both. In him there is neither male nor female, Jew nor Gentile, bond nor free. You can come freely to the Lord Jesus Christ and he will accept you just as you are. Thank God, just as you are. You don't know where I am, preacher. I don't care where you are. You don't know what I've done. It'll make a difference what you've done. I'm not the issue anyway. He paid for it. He paid for your sin. He paid for it and he loves you. Will you accept him tonight? Will you receive him? That's the question. Will you take hold of that rock of ages? Plant your feet firmly on that foundation and you shall not be moved. Father, in thy name I pray. Bless your holy word, those who listen. Father, I don't have an idea. I have no idea who's out there and who listened to make a difference. I'm just the messenger. But you know, you know every last one of them and you know what they're going to do with the word. I pray that it would take root. I pray they'll have ears to hear. I pray they'll receive it and it'll bring forth fruit in due time. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you, dear friend. Thank you for listening. Lord willing, we'll be back here Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. And we're going to have prayer meeting. We're going to continue having these meetings like you're watching tonight. I'm going to be bringing messages here in the church. Brother Caldwell is going to be leading the singing. And we're going to be here until we find out soon.